Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I just want to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm up to 110 subscribers now. Um, the last video I did, building the walls, was a great success. It's had about 1400 views already, um, so that's good to see. Okay, this video is going to be basically a mix and match. You've got bits showing the free ply beam being built, which is what's being shown now. And we'll then move on to the front still and how I had to prepare for that for the floor and the wall. So in the video that you can see now, I'm put together the three ply beam. These beams are above every opening and every window. They consist of three 8x2s screwed and nailed together and then M12 coach bolts go right the way through. So that's a case of marking the holes at 400mm centres and then drill in an M12 clearance hole for the studs. I then use a hole saw to countersink the coach bolt head into the uh, free ply beam because obviously it's going to be finishing flush with the walls. So in order to be able to put the RSB cladding on, you don't want the heads or the nuts of the bolt sticking through. So I countersink the heads and then I also route her out for the square washers and the nuts to sit in so they sit internally within the beam and not protruding. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm using the nut gun to do up the nylocks and I will then use a grinder to cut off the bits of stud that are sticking outside of the free ply beam because obviously we want the flush. That's what I'm doing now, I'm just cutting off the remaining parts of the studs. able to bolt the wall sole plate to the top of the steel I had to drill some M12 clearance holes through the steel. Normally you'd use a mag drill for this but I haven't got one so I did it very carefully trying not to snap my wrist with the standard hand drill and M12 drill bits. I did get through a couple of M12 drill bits where they snapped where it snagged but generally taking it nice and slow and square with plenty of lubricant and I managed to get through it's still relatively easy to be fair the holes weren't 100% straight like you would achieve for using a mag drill obviously because I'm doing it by hand um, but they were good enough the steel's not that thick uh, the webbing of the steel's not that thick so you know, even if you're out by a little bit you're not going to see it too much by the time you've gone through the timber um, I had to just be careful I didn't snag and snap my arm on my wrist because there's a lot of torque down through that drill.
so we're now putting the wall plate on I've got the DPC underneath the wall plate and that will come right the way across the front of the steel to protect the steel from any water that could potentially go in just to prevent any rusting as you can see the coach bolts are countersunk and then they go straight through the top of the timber through the steel and they're double nutted underneath I'll also shot fire a couple of pins in there as an extra security method but that timber's not going anywhere so that timber being bolted to the steel gives us a good foundation to start building our walls from a little trick that I learned from Robin Clevett on his YouTube channel is in order to be able to retrofit the countersunk hole afterwards you can create a little bit of a plate like this you screw it into place so it can't go anywhere and then that will allow you to drill with your drill bit because obviously once you've drilled your main hole your centre point will no longer centre the, the drill in place it will wobble all over the shop so by having this little plate that's screwed in place it keeps it in line and it follows the hole that you've already drilled and you get a nice little recess there ready for your coach bolt head obviously what we don't want is the coach bolt heads protruding because then your wall plate won't sit tight and flush to the, the sole plate Now the wall plate is fully secured to the top of the steel, it's time to put the front timber trimmers in place that will support the joist hangers. So what I've done is because the depth of the steel is a lot deeper than the depth of the 8x2 timber, I've cut several packing pieces and I've screwed these to the back and I've chamfered the top of them so they sit nice and tight in the webbing of the steel. So the trimmer of the timber trimmer will then sit flush with the front of the steel so the joist hangers can be nailed into that and then the straps can overhang the top and they'll support the joist and it'll be in the right position rather than putting in two entire lengths of 8x2 into the webbing it's, it saves on material and it's quicker and easier to just put packers in behind and then what I've done is once the timber's clamped in place I can then drill through from the front of the steel through the holes that are already in place in the steel straight through the timber and that allows me to have a nice straight guided hole for the coach bolts to go through the timber trimmer through the steel and then be double nutted on the inside of the steel which gives a nice secure timber to support the front floor joists. In the next few time lapses you're going to see me nailing in the joist hangers with a nail gun, cutting the floor joists, routing the ends of the floor joists so the bottoms of the joist hangers sit flush with the timbers so when you put your plasterboard on it sits nice and tight to the entire steel and the joist hangers don't push the ends of the plasterboards out and then you also see me cutting and fitting the noggins and then I will be routering in the joist hanger straps into the front timber sole plate so the wall can sit on top of it flush.
So the floor for the front is now complete, noggins are all in, you've got the double joist there to support the wall above it. So the next stage is to put the temporary boarding across the floor, so I've got a decent floor. 
Then all these hangers on this middle steel here need to be cut down and then shot fired into the steel. So they're overhung. So the joists are supported from the trimmer plate and across the top of the steel. So it's all got to be cut of a grinder and then shot fired down. And then on the front there, where those straps are on the front, I've got to draw around them and then router in all the joist hangers so they're flush, which is the same as what I did on the rear. So the steel and the wall plate are now fully prepped. They're supporting the floor joists and they're now ready to start building the front timber wall. You can see there I've cut them all down with a grinder. I've then routed and recessed the joist straps in and then several nails into the top. So not only are the timber trimmers at the front of the steels supporting the joist hangers, they're also hung along the top and then they'll also be sandwiched in by the wall sole plate that's gonna be nailed into the top of that. So they're not going anywhere. Nice and secure. The building inspector came and checked that a few weeks later and he's very happy with the amount of effort and the extra time we've gone in to recess all of these and nail them in. So it's a bit above and beyond what we had to do really, but he's happy. You can also see there, that's the coach bolts going through and bolted in with the DPC hanging down across the front to protect the steel. So what we've got now, I can't remember whether I've explained this previously, but we've now got a DPC that's stapled to the wall plate and this 300mm will provide our cavity. So you've got the one underneath that will stay down there across the front of the steel and any water that gets into the cavity will run past the steel and won't be able to sit on the steel. This top DPC will go up underneath the breather membrane on the walls and will protect the bottom of the walls, it will protect the bottom of the OSB so any condensation or water will run down down the wall, down the cavity and then sink through the weep holes 